Hi, welcome back. I'm Dave with Remodel Media, and today we're going under the sea. I know what you're thinking. I missed my calling. I should have been singing for Disney, but my loss is your gain. For, because in a few weeks, I'm actually going to be celebrating my 14th anniversary helping people put together kitchens, baths, outdoor kitchens, and various other home renovation projects. Where does the time go? So without any further ado, let's get into it. So in a previous video, which I'll link to above, we discussed how to pick the proper kitchen sink. In a follow-up video to that, we discussed how to pick out the proper kitchen faucet and various other kitchen accessories for the countertop. Today, I'd like to wrap that all up and talk to you about all the different options you have for choosing fixtures under your sink. Now, I know that a lot of people are going to be thinking, this isn't very pretty. It's not, but it's still really important. I get a lot of folks that come in here and the first thing they say to me when we start talking under the sink is, hey Dave, I need a reverse osmosis system. That's great. Uh, what sort of reverse osmosis system did you want? I don't know, something with no maintenance. I don't need all that stuff going on under the sink with the, the tank and all those filters and everything. Just something simple and, uh, and easy to maintain. Okay, well then what you're looking for is a good high-grade multi-stage filtration system, not necessarily a reverse osmosis unit. Okay. So just to take a step back here, a reverse osmosis unit looks something like this. So a reverse osmosis unit needs a certain level of maintenance. You need to change out the filter cartridges that are in a reverse osmosis unit. You also need to change out the membrane. Uh, the membrane is what the water passes through that really gets out the minerals and things like that. So the membrane on most units needs to be changed every three years. Check with your manufacturer for specifics. And the filters, generally speaking, need to be changed every year or so. Depending on use, of course, you could stretch that out if it's just one or two folks in the home. Feel free to stretch it out. You'll notice that the filters stop working when your water starts to taste like chlorine again. Uh, you'll notice that the membranes stop working when your water starts to have that flavor again. So they come in varying shapes and sizes, but usually they have a couple of different features that they all have. All of them will use three or four gallons of water in order to make two or three. So you're always sending a gallon or so of water down the drain as it's preparing the water. What this unit does is it takes everything out of the water. The minerals, the chlorine taste and odor, the volatile organic compounds, everything. And that sounds like a good idea. Uh, my challenge to you is go to the store, pick up a bottle of distilled water, take a sip of it, just a sip, don't drink too much of it, and tell me how that tastes, because that's essentially reverse osmosis water. It's water that has had everything stripped out of it. So a lot of folks, when they're drinking water, they want it to, quote, taste like water. What that means is there's minerals in there, there's maybe some calcium, some magnesium, in, in varying concentrations. Here in California, we have a lot of hard water. We're at the very end of the pipeline, so we get the sludge that's left over. As such, our water gets heavily treated. The, the city or county will add a lot of chlorine usually to kill any bacteria that's left over. And chlorine is great because it kills living organisms, except we're living organisms. So a reverse osmosis unit is absolutely going to remove that chlorine. It's going to remove all the big bads, but it's also going to remove minerals and things that give water its taste. So if that's what you're looking for, then a reverse osmosis is right. However, there are more economical and 
in my opinion, tastier ways to go. So you look at something like one of these, and probably the most popular is the Everpure H300. It's been popular for many, many years. And what this is a tri-stage filtration. Basically, it's a carbon media filtration. It's not much more complicated than the, ref the filter that's on your refrigerator uh, filtering your ice cubes, except it's got a higher capacity. It's going to last, the filter is going to last. That wasn't supposed to happen. This is an expansion tank. Apparently, he had a statement to make. He says, don't forget about me. An expansion tank is a, uh, a component of a reverse osmosis system. So it's where the water gets stored when it's being processed. So thank you very much. The filter is going to last um, probably about 3,000 gallons, which more or less equates to about a year of use. And this is still going to filter out your chlorine taste and odor, your vault organic compounds, and they have a whole list of other things, although those are probably the two biggest things people are concerned with, especially the chlorine. What it's not going to take out are things like minerals. Uh, minerals are things that give water its taste. If you have a favorite bottle of water, whether that be a Dasani, uh, Aquafina, Evian, whatever it is, uh, the reason you like it is because of the mineral recipe that the, that particular company is using. That particular company is using a particular mixture of minerals, whether it be potassium, magnesium, etc. when they create this water, and that's what you like about it. Most bottled water, whether it's mountain spring, purified, whatever it is, goes through some sort of a process by which, uh, similar to reverse osmosis, where they remove everything from the water and they add back in minerals that achieve the taste that you might like. So if you like mountain spring water, then those are the minerals that you like. They probably have a little bit more uh, potassium and magnesium uh, versus a purified water, which has less. So just to give you a little bit of an insight, no, it, that water might have been on a mountaintop somewhere at some point, but they didn't just go to the stream and scoop it up. So we've covered how to purify your water. Uh, those are your two basic categories of water purification methods. Uh, both are great. I happen to like the inline water filters, not necessarily the reverse osmosis units. Uh, but again, that's my personal tastes. Uh, now the next choice that you're gonna have is now that we've covered the cold side, you can actually have a hot tank, which nine times out of 10 is a unit that is made by a company called Anaheim Manufacturing. Looks just like this. And almost every manufacturer of hot tank is buying the unit from them with a few exceptions uh, and putting their own label on it. So for example, Everpure, sorry guys, I'm out yet. You're buying your tank from Anaheim Manufacturing. That's okay though. Uh, that happens a lot. So uh, cost on one of these should be around 150 or less. Uh, and what this is going to do for you is it's going to give you the ability to have essentially a small water heater underneath your sink. And this is going to uh, work pretty much like the water heater that's probably in your garage, where it's going to heat the water up to a certain degree, and that water is going to be hooked up to a faucet. And you can turn on that faucet and have a cup of hot tea, a cup of hot cocoa, or even if you want some really hot water just to rinse out your cup, just in case, because it was sitting overnight and uh, you woke up in the morning, you want a fairly sanitary cup of water, well, there you go. One of the last pieces of undercounter sink equipment I want to talk to you about today is your garbage disposal. Now, most garbage disposals uh, use a three bolt mounting system. If you look underneath your sink, this is probably something similar to what you have. Now, what this means as a, for a consumer is that you can change out the disposer without having to change out 
everything that's on top of the sink. It makes for a faster change out when it comes time to having a disposer that needs to be replaced. There are some models, however, that use a slightly different mounting system. So if this is the mounting system you have underneath your sink, and it's held in place like this, then you need to replace that disposer either completely by dismantling the whole thing and taking the flange out and replacing it all, or you need to use one that has this connection. So just be aware that there are two types of connections. Taking a picture before you go shopping for a new disposer, taking a picture of the one that you have is a huge help for the person on this end who's trying to help you select the right one. So now you need to choose which disposer to put in. In most rentals that I see, the, uh, the popular brand and model is the Insecrator Badger. The Insecrator Badger is available in two basic models, the Badger 1 and the Badger 5. The Badger 1 is a one-third horsepower. The Badger 5 is a half horsepower. The Badger 5 has uh, a two-year in-home warranty, whereas the Badger 1 just has one-year warranty. So, that being said, I, for about a $20 or $30 difference, I would prefer to have a Badger 5 if I was putting something in a rental. The reason I wouldn't put the Badger 5 in my own home is only because there are far better units. There are units that are stronger and units that are quieter as well. It's a popular opinion that maybe if it's a lower horsepower or a less powerful unit, it's going to be quieter. That's not necessarily the case. Some of the larger units also have a little bit more insulation built in around the motor. They use solid steel grinding components instead of zinc or aluminum. So, uh, and that's not just the blades, but the gears as well. So the larger units oftentimes will be quieter than the cheaper counterparts. The next level of garbage disposal is going to be the Insincorator Evolution Series. Now the Insincorator Evolution Series is available in three basic sizes. You have your half horsepower, three quarter horsepower, and one horsepower. One horsepower being the most powerful and the quietest. Now, I happen to prefer, if I'm shopping for an Insincorator specifically, if I'm shopping for that brand, my favorite unit is uh, the Insincorator Evolution Series Compact. It's a three quarter horsepower. It's fairly short by comparison to some others, giving you a little more space under, underneath for storage of cleaners and things like that under your sink. But also, it is the first level where Insincreator introduces a feature called Auto Reverse. Now, the Auto Reverse is a really neat feature because in some of those cheaper models that I showed you before, if there's ever a jam, you have to get under the disposer with a wrench and back it off. It's, again, it's not an impossible task, but if I can get a machine that does it for me, why not? Uh, the auto reverse, all that does is if it senses a jam, it automatically sends, sends it in reverse and it backs away from the jam, giving you the chance to turn the disposer off, clean up the jam, hit the reset button, and you're good to go. My favorite disposer, at least as of right now, is it has to be the Franke one and a quarter horsepower. Now this particular one, not only is it one and a quarter as opposed to Insincorator's one, it has a similar warranty, it has a similar, uh, a lot of similar features actually, uh, but it's just as quiet, and here's the kicker, it's usually 50 to $75 less than Insincorator's closest competitor. So being more powerful for less money, and just as quiet and just as nice, I think that's probably the best value for your dollar. Now I'm gonna go through a couple of tips on installation. Uh, real quick. So I've had the phone call, it happens a lot, where I pick up the phone and the customer says, you sold me this dishwasher and it's leaking all over the place. Where's it leaking from? Uh, how can I help? It's leaking from the hose where the dishwasher drains into the disposer. Did you hook up an air gap? Are you crazy? I don't want to do that. I don't want that on my counter. First off, I would suggest you put in an air gap because if there's ever a clog again, this won't happen, but 
let's take care of the immediate problem right now. Uh, did, when the installer installed it, did he knock out the cap that's inside of the disposer? It's, a, it's called a knockout cap. You take a screwdriver, you pop it real quick, and that makes it so you can hook up your dishwasher to it. Uh, of course he did. He, he's a licensed plumber. Of course, he, oh, he installed it properly. Do me a favor. Is he, is he there right now? Or can I have his phone number? Yeah, go ahead and give him a call. His number is 555-1212. All right, thank you very much. Hey, Mr. Plumber. Yeah, I just got a call from our customer that the uh, disposer is leaking. I just wanted to double check. Did you make sure to knock out the knockout cap? Hold on, I'll, give, I'll call you right back. Five minutes later, I get a phone call from the customer. The plumber came and he knocked out the, the knockout cap. Everything's fine. Good to know. Anything else I can help you with today? Nah, I guess that's it. All right, have a great day. Let me know if there's anything else I can do to help you out. So when, that, when I was talking about that knockout cap, it's usually located right here. And that's where the dishwasher drains into the disposer. And the, the reason there's a knockout cap there is not every person who has a disposer also has a dishwasher. So they cap this off inside right there. And when you're hooking up the disposer drain line, you hit it with a screwdriver or something long and pointy, and that knocks out the cap and everything's hooked up properly. But it's a common mistake when disposers are installed in tandem with a dishwasher. It's an easy step to miss. Um, when it comes to turning your disposer on, you have two options. Option one is to have a light switch somewhere that's wired to the disposer. And that's fine, a lot of us have it. Uh, you can have the light switch on the backsplash, you can have the light switch down underneath the counter or even inside the cupboard where the uh, disposer is located. That's, uh, that's all well and good. A cleaner, more interesting option that I mentioned in a video prior is an air switch. Now, an air switch is just a button. You push it right here. When you push that button, the air flows through this little tube into this box. This box is plugged into the wall, and the disposer is plugged into this box, and this box is usually mounted to the side inside the cabinet. So the disposer is plugged in here. The air goes through the tube. It goes in right there, flips a switch, and inside, uh, the power turns on and your disposer starts running. You push it again, air goes through the tube, in the little hole, flips a switch, the, the disposer turns off. Uh, it's a cleaner installation, cleaner option. They'll definitely give you more opportunity to do uh, decorative things with your backsplash once you uh, finish all your tile and everything. Now every disposer, ships with something called a disposal flange. That usually is something that looks a little bit like this, that basically this, the design of this thing is to stop the water when you don't want water going down the drain, if you're washing dishes, bathing the baby, whatever it is. So, uh, uh, and this piece gets installed in the very bottom of the sink. It's just a decorative trim is all it really is. However, as you can see, if I have a copper sink, can I use the polished steel trim that comes with my disposer? That looks funny. That doesn't look like I thought that decision through very well, does it? So we actually do have decorative options for disposal flanges in corresponding finishes. Looks like I thought through that decision a little bit better now, doesn't it? That's all we have for you today. If you liked what you saw, give us a like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified the next time we post some more videos. You can give us a like right here. You can uh, watch some more videos right here. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. In the description below, I'm going to post links to most of the products that we discussed today. And it... If you need anything from me, you know where to find me.